Hey, hey, Mr. War at your service again. Look at this wonderful morning. Let me go ahead and put this full screen. Voila. Yes, I'm hiding behind the monitor one more time. That's right. No, I'm not behind this little shade here. Sorry. Mr. War had to make a quick video very fast. So, therefore, we're going to be using Smart. Here we go. Let's take a look at our lesson today. Our objective is pretty clear there in bold red. Let me get myself a pen. Oh, yes. The, calligra the calligraphic pens are back. I think that's how you say that. Objective. It says here we're going to use basic facts to estimate quotients with two digit divisors. So this is what we're going to be looking at here today. A very, very important concept. But first, before we do that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of fluency. This fluency practice is, again, very, very important for us to be able to just snap out answers quickly. We're always looking at patterns. And we have been looking at the uh, issue of rounding. And this is going to be important as we look at estimate today. Okay? So estimate basically is kind of a guess. It's an about number. When we use the word about in a word problem, we're usually referring to estimate okay so we'll go ahead and like throw out a number like 28 now if we were to estimate this number to give it kind of an, uh, an equal value or an equivalent value we would say that it would be 30 okay same thing goes we can have larger numbers such as this okay now 34 we tend to go down at 4 right so we were to say that that's also 30 okay these are just ways that we can estimate now, we can also do the same thing. Uh, let me see here if I could just get this kind of out of the way here. Oh, come on. Come on. There you go. And we'll move you up here. There we go. That way I can kind of keep the same page going here and come down and get some blue. And, for example, so if we're going to estimate quotients, this is what we're going to do here first. We're going to use some basic facts here that are going to help us. Now, here, we know that we're dividing by a power of 10 ends up moving the decimal one place, okay? So, but a lot of times you can look at this right away and say, well, if I divide by a power of 10 here, and I divide by a power of 10 here, it's, it's like taking away one place value here, one zero, leaving us with 70, okay? Now, we can also do this. We can also break other numbers apart. Uh, wait a second, not quite what I want to do here. Come back, erase. Let me get another number. All right, we erase that. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So now let's do 800 divided by 20. And we look at this, we can see this 800 divided by, and there is a power of 10 there. So we say that's divided by 10, and then we could also divide that by 2. Why can we do that? 20 is 10 times 2. Therefore, we can take 800 divided by 10. Okay, again, giving us 80. Let me get you out of the way. Thank you. And now we have 80 divided by 2. And again, that's 40. Okay, so this is good fluency practice when we look at the power of 10 dividing. Okay, now let's go on to see the next page. Ah! <laughs> you know, Mr. War is always hiding around a corner waiting for something to come springing out. Woo! All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at, can you tell what that is? Let's do it again later. There you go. Okay, now we have the application problem, which is building on, on, on problems and concepts that we've already completed. It's going to improve our ability to uh, be successful with the concept development. Okay. Anyway, let's look at this word problem. 852 pounds of grapes were packed equally into three boxes for shipping. Okay. How many pounds of grapes will there be in two boxes? Hmm. Okay, now it's really important that if when you read a, a math problem, that if it doesn't make sense to you to reread it, and I mean reread it, it could be two or three times. And I'm looking at this trying to make sense. The next thing is there isn't anything I think more powerful than trying to draw a picture. Even if it's so, you know, so crude and, and that it's not very refined, meaning it's just a picture showing something. See, this here shows that whole amount. And this is, I can tell by looking at this, tells me this is going to be the dividend. Now, the dividend 
is the number in a division problem that you're dividing. Okay, and we sometimes think of this as like the whole number. So don't be confused. You could have a dividend that is not a whole. It could be 35.2, which we know the 0.2 isn't a whole, but this uh, is the number that we're dividing. Okay, so kind of think of that. Now it says they were packed equally. This is a key word. In fact, let's have some fun with this one here. Dun, 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 dun. Time for me to get my eraser. Okay, goodbye to you. Now, where is that wonderful magic pen? See, let's see if this will work. Okay, I do this, and voila, focus. That's right. Equally is a very important word in math because this lets you know that we're talking about groups that are the same or a number that is the same. Well, it says equally in two, three boxes for shipping. So when you look at this, again, I'm doing this only to show you how important it is to, to visualize what it is that you're trying to understand. So I'm trying to take this amount and I'm trying to put them into these three boxes for shipping. Very important. Now I get a better. Now look at the question though. Once we do that, that doesn't mean we've solved the problem because the question actually says what we need to find out is how many pounds of grapes will there be in two boxes. So they're not interested how many are in three boxes, but in two. So we're gonna have to do a couple steps here. First things first here, let me get another color. I keep switching this up. So we're gonna go ahead and take that dividend, that 852, and we're gonna divide that by three because we wanna go ahead and put those in three boxes. Another division, we always take that divisor, and this guy's the divisor. The divisor has the job of basically telling us how many groups we're going to make, okay? How many equal groups. And so we see how many times will three go into eight. You can see it'll go in there two times, okay? And the reason why this is true is because this is actually 800. That means I could actually put 200 here, 200 here, and 200 here, okay? In fact, let's have some fun here. Let's put 200 here, 200 here, and 200 here, okay? And that's 600. See, three times two, six. Now I'm subtracting, and now I end up with two left over. That's 200. I couldn't put another 200 or 100 because it won't divide. See, I'm left with 200 and I can't divide that again with a three. So now what I need to do is bring down that next digit, which is 50. It's a five, but it's 50. So now I have, you can see 250 here. Now, how many times will three go into that 25? Okay, well, that's gonna go in there eight times, looks like to me, because three times eight is 24. I dread it, I'm gonna run out of room here. Okay, so as you can see, the same kind of thing, eight. That means I can put 80 here. See, Oop. Uh, let me see here if we can do this right. Um, go eight times. So let's see, I'm getting stuck here. Oh, where's my eraser? Too many things happening at the same time here. Okay, let me get that pen again. Okay, so two, four, so you're gonna be able to get 80 plus 80, plus 80, okay? See, that's 240, and that's why that works. Three, we're making three groups, and each group can have 80 in it, and that's 240. Now we have the two to bring down, and now we're left here with basically, it looks like 120. And again, I keep looking at one there because that is what it is. Now, three will go into 12, and it'll go in there four times, okay? So now you can see, we can put four here, four here, and four here. And then you see, here's our number, 284. So that's kind of like when we think of that unit, this is the unit, okay? 284 into each one of those boxes for shipping. Now the question says, how many pounds of grapes will there be in two boxes? And I know some of you are really quickly saying, whoa, that's right, and now I can just add those two together. However, you know what, in the upper grade math, like we're in the upper grade math, we're going to go ahead and just multiply. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take 284 times 2, and then you can see we have 568, and that would be 568 pounds of grapes in two boxes. Okay, nice problem, eh? And that's important that you see that. Um, yeah, that's not working out, okay? This is what I'm looking for right there. Do you see that? It's not working out. I don't want you guys getting confused. 
So ignore that and just know that this is what I'm looking for. Okay? Got it? I hope so because I'm erasing it. Goodbye. Now, come on to the next page here. Now, the concept development here we're going to like focus on here. Let's go ahead and start applying what we're, oops, what we're trying to do here. We were using basic facts to estimate quotients. This is what we're getting ready to do now with two digit divisors. Okay, that's the, the related to the uh, objective here of what we're, what we're going to do now. So let me go ahead and put the number 402, let's say divided by 19. Okay, now we look at this. What we're going to basically do is we're going to try to estimate this quotient, which means we're not going to figure out the exact answer. That's not the goal here is to figure out the exact answer. Our goal is, is to let's round this so that we can divide it easily, mentally. Something that, you know, a caveman could do. So let's go ahead and put the two-digit divisor here as an estimate. Well, you look at 19, and immediately you're going to say, well, that's so close to 20. And you know what? I completely concur. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and make 1920. So I'm going to go ahead and get another pen. So I'm going to go ahead and put 20 here. Okay, and I'm just showing you this is the estimate. See, now I have this problem, 402 divided by 20. Well, that's wonderful and all, but the problem is, is that I still can't do this mentally. This isn't something easy to do. So I'm looking at this number and I can see, aha, you know what? I bet you notice this too. You guys are so sharp. Four and two, they're pretty compatible. I mean, two times two is four. So is there a way that we could dump this too? <laughs> Didn't mean to use that verb dump, but hey, let's get rid of this guy here. Well, could we just make that 400? I think we could. You know why? Because I just did it. 400 divided by 20. Oh, you know what? Now I see we're getting to where we can solve this very easily. Looking at 400 and looking at 20, you can see, haha. Uh -huh. Now, there's two ways you could solve it. Some of you could just do it and you already know it's 40 divided by 2. Or maybe you want to do that extra step and do that. Because you know that there's a power of 10 here and a power of 10 here because you're dividing that out. Now you have 40. 40 divided by 2, which is 20, okay? Pretty simple. Seems like it'd be pretty easy, okay? So this is just a, a way of solving. Now, I'm going to show you, and you're not going to be required to do this all the time. We could have divided this out, but we got a pretty good estimate here. So now we know it's about 20. And when you think about it, look at 19. How many times is it going to go into 40? It's going to go into two times. It's 38, okay? And then you can see that's going to go in there one time, okay? And we're getting left over with three. So you see, 21 and 20 is pretty close, okay? This is the advantage of estimating our quotient, okay, with two-digit divisors. And this is going to be crucial as we check our work. Okay, let's do another problem. And come over here to this one here. Whoa, well, hello there, fellow. What are you, <laughs> where'd you come from? Oh, my goodness. Mr. War is up to his old tricks again. What is up? Hey, you need some eyes, you know what? Uh, maybe, uh, hey, give you a little bigote. There you go. Whoo. Yeah, a little mustache there, a little goatee. And ears, no. Oh, no, the ears aren't working for you. Sorry, no offense, buddy, but you know what? You look better earless. Goodbye. Okay. Hey, back to our regular programming here. So let's take another problem, for example, like 149 divided by 71. Now again, we want to try to estimate that two-digit divisor here because this is the divisor. You're thinking right away, Mr. War, I think 70 is good. I agree. Problem is, we look over here, I don't know, some of you might be thinking, hey, you know, 150 would be great. However, you know, seven and that, well, that they're not very compatible. You know, they're not. So, hmm, that's not going to work. So maybe I want to think of another number that's close. Ah, 140. If we have 140, look at 7 and 14 are compatible, and it's pretty close. See, now I have my 140 divided by, and you can divide it by 10 and then divide it by 7. So you can see that, power of 10. And now we have 14 divided by 7 equals 2. I love when things work out. So this is really actually, this is a, a good way to estimate, okay? I know. You're watching the lesson too? So um, keeping that in mind, 
um, this is a, you, you know what? Are you seeing double? You are, because that's the same thing as last time. Okay? You got another one of those. Nice. And goodbye. All right. So, um, whenever you see me do that, you know that that's part of that special, special code. Now, we're going to go ahead and let's move on to another page. I get a clean slate. And let's do... Uh, let's do another one. Let's do one more. Let's do 400, 427 divided by 58. Now you want to start looking at it. So now you kind of see the pattern. This number is going to make it really hard to divide. Okay. We can't figure that out. So let me see here. 427 and I see 58. So if I were to turn that to 60, is 60 compatible with some number over here? <sighs> Aha, uh -huh. I know my times table, and I know that 60, see, you got your 6 and your 42. 6 times 7 is 42. So if I just turn this into 420, look how much easier that problem will be for, again, we're just estimating a quotient here. So we're making our best guess here and then make it easy to solve. Now you can look at your power 10 right away. Look at that. Now you have 42 divided by 6 equals 7. Look how fast that was. And it was because we were able to round that highest place value, giving us a pretty good estimate of what that quotient will be. And remember, that quotient is just an answer to a division problem. Now, I'm just going to solve this. I'm also going to do this. And what I'm going to, so you can see how close again it is. Okay, we have 427. We have that divided by 58. Yet if I were to do this division problem, you can see I'd do exactly what we're doing here anyway. See, I'd take 58 and either just see how many times it's going to go into here, or what would be easier is, is how many times will 5, which is 50, go into 420? So it's another way you kind of do it. Rather than trying to figure out how many times 58 is going to go in this whole number, let's just figure out how many times 5 will go into 42. And you can see that, eh, we've got about 8, 8 times. Now, we know 8 times is going to be too large here, okay? Because if we do 58 times 8, oops, Lose my pen here. I have 64, and then we have 40, and then we have 46. See, a little bit too large. So that's where our 7 comes into play. And that's one less. We could take 58 off of that, which is 6. 406, I believe. That sounds about right. See, and then we could solve the problem. See, you see how we're getting really close. I'm not going to solve this entire division problem, but I wanted to show you that. Okay, my friends, you know what? That is how things work. Um, what I want you to realize is that um, the key is, is all about quotients. Now, uh, again, you know the rule about getting in that assignment and putting in that secret code to get credit. And now, you guys, live long and prosper, my friends.